I want to show you this interview that Netanyahu gave with Piers Morgan 13 years ago. But even though this interview is old, it's very insightful and results in Netanyahu making some startling admissions. Here's the interview. Prime Minister, I mean, this is the famous Netanyahu map that everyone talks about in your office. And yeah. I guess what, what is fascinating to me is when you look at this in scale, yeah. is how small Israel seems by comparison to the Middle East. How small it is. I mean, the Middle East starts here, sort of there on the edge of the wall. That's Morocco. This is Tunisia. This is Libya, which is about 100 times the size of Israel. Egypt, about 40 times the size of Israel. This is the Sinai Desert. Saudi Arabia, God knows how many times. Iraq, Syria, Iran. You want to see Israel now? Here's Israel. My finger covers it with the West Bank. Everything. So it's a tiny country. Tiny, surrounded, uh, well, shall we say, living in a very tough neighborhood. Now, you know, if you're small, it's not necessarily a problem. I mean, Luxembourg doesn't have a security problem. Can I ask you a stupid question? But if Luxembourg were surrounded by the kind of neighborhood where we're uh, surrounded by, well, can I ask that's a, another matter. Can I ask what may sound a stupid question? Yeah. Do you ever wish Israel wasn't there? <laughs> Do you ever wish it had just been stuck near Luxembourg? Uh, Would that make life a lot easier for everybody? Well, you know, it might make our life easier, but it wouldn't materially make the difference. You could stick Belgium in here, and the same thing would happen, because the people who want us out, they don't want any Western presence here, and guess what? Increasingly, they don't want any Western presence here either. They have dreams of re-establishing the caliphate. Now, there's five key points that comes out from this interview. Firstly, he demonstrates how small and weak Israel actually is. Yes, people will say Israel is one of the most powerful armies in the world, have high technology and high tech weaponry. Yet what he admits is that without Western support, effectively, Israel's ability to exist in the region is impossible. Jewish population in Israel is around 7 million. Only 7 million, that's less than the population of Dubai. In fact, ignoring any of the other surrounding Muslim countries in the region and just taking the Palestinian population that currently lives under the occupation of the Zionists then we find that the number of Palestinians in Gaza West Bank and currently what's designated as the area called Israel is actually higher the Palestinian population is actually higher than the Jewish population it's more than 7 million in one report from the Times of Israel it places the Jewish population at 47 percent they are the minority on the land they claim that is theirs if we now add the number of Palestinian refugees Jews who were forced out of Palestine, whether that was from 1948 or 1967, then the Palestinian population would be 70% of the region of Palestine and Jews would be relegated to just 30%. So even with Zionist attempt to steal ever more land for Israel and with the constant killings they have undertaken against the Palestinian people and with the attempts to provide free housing and land for any Jew anywhere in the world to live in Israel, they are still a minority in this region. But here's a further problem. For many Muslims, Palestine isn't a nationalistic problem for the Palestinians to struggle against. For many Muslims, they see this as an occupation of Muslim land. They see Palestinians as their brothers and sisters in the deen. They hold on to the idea established in the hadith of the Prophet wasallam, who states, the parable of the believers in the affection, mercy and compassion for each other is that of a body. When any limb aches, the whole body reacts with sleeplessness and fever. To take the words from NATO's own charter. We re we've reaffirmed that our Article 5 commitment is sacred and an attack on one is an attack on all and we will defend every inch of NATO territory. Many Muslims see an attack on one Muslim as an attack on all Muslims. So suddenly, when we factor in the size of the global Ummah and the fact that this Zionist entity that cannot be covered by one single finger is surrounded by approximately 2 billion Muslims who see the absolute horror of babies' limbs being blown apart and starvation being used as a strategy of war, then Zionist entity's ability to exist is really called into question. And it goes beyond just population size. Israel's borders are susceptible to sanctions if there was a true will emanating from these surrounding Muslim states. Its ports are dependent upon waterways that are largely controlled by Muslim states. Its land routes have to dissect Muslim lands. So Muslim states have the capacity to really harm the economy and thus the sustainability of Israel 
if they were to effectively block off trade routes to the Zionist entity. We've seen already what a small militia like the Houthis have done to them with their small actions against shipping routes in the Red Sea. Imagine if Egypt, Jordan or Saudi closed off their land trade routes to Israel. Imagine if Turkey stopped all the trade to Israel as well as cut off the gas and oil pipelines that serve Israel's energy needs. Israel as a state would no longer function. And remember, over a quarter of the population of Jews in Israel have dual nationality, meaning they would probably rather emigrate to their mother countries in Europe and America than stay in conditions of imposed embargo by Muslim states. And also remember, this strategy of America has extremely strict sanctions placed on Russia because it sees Russia as a threat. Israel itself has placed Gaza under strict sanctions and has effectively placed them under siege for over 18 years now. Two million Palestinians live in what has been described as the world's largest open-air prison. Since Hamas took over the Gaza Strip in 2007, after legislative elections, Israel has imposed a full siege on the enclave. It strictly controls everyone and everything going in or out. They, I, the Western states, see as justified to impose sanctions when these states are seen as rogue states going against their interests. So what about then when you have leaders of Israel facing possible arrest warrants by the ICC, the International Criminal Court, and Israel itself is currently under investigation for a plausible genocide by the International Court of Justice, then wouldn't it be correct, wouldn't it be the logical thing that Muslim states would impose a sanction against this rogue nation, this colonial entity, in the heart of the Muslim lands that is oppressing and killing thousands, hundreds of thousands of people within that region. And the second thing that we get from this interview, that Netanyahu admits that it is actually better if Israel is not located where it is in Palestine. Do you ever wish Israel wasn't there? Do you ever wish it had just been stuck near Luxembourg? Uh, Would that made life a lot easier for everybody? Well, you know, it might make our life easier, but it wouldn't materially make the difference. You could stick Belgium in here and the same thing would happen. It seems a blindingly obvious point that if the raison d'etre of Israel's existence in the first place was a homeland to protect Jews from what we saw in Europe in you know late 19th, early 20th century up to the Second World War, then why choose an air that would be so hostile to their colonial existence? It doesn't make sense. Why not save everyone's money and relocate Israel, this Jewish homeland, to let's say America, maybe New York, where there's approximately 1 million Jews living there already. Thirdly, Netanyahu doesn't try to justify that Jews have a right to live in Palestine by claiming some sort of false history that it's their land and that they are indigenous to the land. But rather than using this false claim, he uses the claim that, well, imagine if Belgium was there, had occupied Palestine, Muslims wouldn't be happy with that. Make the difference. You could stick Belgium in here and the same thing would happen because the people who want us out, they don't want any Western presence here. Well, yeah, of course they wouldn't be happy with that. Who'd be happy with another colonizing power deciding to take their land, expelling 750,000 original inhabitants from their land, and then constantly warmongering in an attempt to destabilize the whole region, not just Palestine, but the whole region as a whole? That's literally not a justification. That's the worst argument. Why would any Muslim, why would the Palestinians simply accept the colonial expansion of Belgium as opposed to the colonial? expansion of any other country they wouldn't but this leads to the fourth point the admission that the problem palestinians and by greater extension muslims have with zionist entity isn't because they are jews if a non-jewish state attempted to colonize their land palestine then the underlying issue is the same it's colonialism by a foreign entity on their lands that's the problem the problem isn't whether they're jew it doesn't really matter whether they're jew christian atheist or other the problem they have is with colonialism itself that's the problem the palestinians have and generally the muslims have regards to the zionist entity in this region and it's clear that it was colonization the british governor of jerusalem at the time his name was ronald store he said during his colonial rule of palestine or the british colonial rule of palestine stated when they attempted to facilitate mass migration in europe European Jews into Palestine that they did so in his words he wanted to create a little loyal Jewish Ulster meaning change the demographics create a loyal British and Western population that would serve their British interest in the region that's what it was about 
a colonial project. Fifth, Netanyahu let it slip that one of the key reasons to have this Zionist entity in the heart of Muslim world is to prevent the re-emergence of the Khilafah. They have dreams of re-establishing the Caliphate. Practical political unity of all Muslim states under one government that could unify the population of the Muslim world, the resources of these lands like oil, gas, coal, etc., as well as unify the armies of these various states into one army under one leadership that will work to defend and promote the interests of the Ummah under the banner of Islam. They recognize that a unified Muslim world would represent a global superpower and the end of Western capitalist hegemony over the region. So how do they seek to maintain this disunity in the Muslim world? Well, one strategy is to create an artificial entity in the heart of the Muslim lands. As Robert Kennedy Jr. once said when describing the strategic value of Israel, that, that the reason for its precision is that it is a fortress for us in the Middle East. And it's like, almost like having an aircraft carrier in the Middle East. Similarly, the famous words of Joe Genocide Biden comes to mind when he said this. If we look at the Middle East, I think it's about time we stop those of us who support, as most of us do, Israel in this body, for apologizing for our support for Israel. There's no apology to be made. None. It is the best $3 billion investment we make. Were there not an Israel, the United States of America would have to invent an Israel to protect her interest in the region. The United States would have to go out and invent an Israel. So Israel is perceived by some in the West as a strategic ally that can act as a fortress, strike out against the Muslim world, create instability and ultimately prevent any moves to unify the Muslim world in order to become this global rival superpower to rival Western and American hegemony in the region. However, it's clear that actually the opposite is now true. Rather than maintaining this unity, Israel is doing the opposite. It's actually unified the Muslim world against Zionist occupation unified the Muslim world and exposed them to the utter hypocrisy of the West in their unstinting support for Israel. Secondly, it's clearly exposed the leadership of the Muslim world, making their position ever more precarious, with people like Mohammed bin Salman, the leader of Saudi, claiming that he may face an assassination attempt if he tried to normalize his relations with Israel. The point is, Israel's position, whether we look at it geographically, population-wise, or the fact that its barbaric behavior has been exposed to the world, means its position is weak. Can you imagine that Trump even claimed, although he was being hyperbolic, that if Kamala Harris was in power, Israel would no longer exist in two years' time? If she's president, I believe that Israel will not exist within two years from now. It then shows you how artificial the entity, this Zionist entity, is. Please remember, when I claim that Israel doesn't have the right to exist, that doesn't mean claiming that Jews don't have the right to exist. Jews before the establishment of Israel lived side by side with Muslims for centuries, including in Palestine. Even the famed Israeli historian Avi Shalem made the point that Israel, rather than bringing security to the Jews, has actually made Jews less safe due to how Israel attempts to connect its existence, its right to commit genocide, its right to commit ethnic cleansing, so closely associated with being Jewish and Judaism. So calling for the end of the colonial project called Israel is not the call to kill all Jews. No, not at all. Rather, what Netanyahu has exposed in his 13-year-old interview now is how weak Israel is. Its existence cannot be justified and it's used as a means to weaken Muslims or an attempt to weaken Muslims by attempting to prevent Muslims unifying under the Khilafah. As Muslims, we should be clear that Israel is weak and that what is holding us back from unifying and implementing an Islamic system is our Muslim work towards it, our work towards unifying our lands, bringing about this Islamic revival, not just in terms of our thoughts, but in our politics and our societies, we are clearly told that if we work towards a path, that's what is required to us, to work, not necessarily to achieve the results, but to work for, on a path of unity and a path to apply Islamic governance throughout our Muslim lands, then we will gain the support of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala being the Lord of all the world and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will bring about the results in our lifetime, inshallah, if we work. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the glorious Quran, O oh, you who believe, if you will aid the cause of Allah, he will aid you and he will plant your feet firm.